Week 21 of the fantasy basketball season and with playoffs starting in most head-to-head leagues. Here's a few guards that looked head off the wire this week. The first guard, Delano Banton of the Portland Trailblazers. So Ben last week, he was on the ad list. And once again this week, he's on it, playing great basketball and getting plenty of playing time since he got traded from the Boston Celtics to the Trailblazers. So on the season for Banton, 7.2 points a game, 2.6 rebounds, 1.6 assists, and 41%. From the field, but the last couple weeks, 18.8 points a game, 5.1 boards, four assists, 2.8 threes, and 40% from the field. So he's getting three, four categories, is banned at minimum for fantasy owners, and he's playing huge minutes for this Portland Trailblazer team. And he's just making the most of his time now, where obviously this Trailblazer team, a lot of injuries, they've missed four starters over the last few games here, and Ben's taking advantage March 13th. Versus Atlanta, 12 points, 5 rebounds, 2 assists, 2 threes, 50% from the field. March 14th versus the Knicks, 16 points, 2 rebounds, 2 assists, 4 steals, 2 threes, 30% from the field. And March 16th at the Pelicans, 28 points, 5 rebounds, 6 assists, 2 blocks, 4 threes, and 50% from the field. So Banton can hit the three ball. He can score the basketball, Will, it looks like, over the last few games. The only thing, field goal percentage and turnovers he's gonna hurt fantasy owners but right now if you need some scoring and a guy's getting major minutes Banton's definitely a good ad this week available in 70 percent of fantasy leagues next guard is duncan robinson of the miami heat to duncan robinson we know his game's catch and shoot three-point shooter and that's about it what he's gonna give fantasy owners but on the season 13.4 points a game 2.5 rebounds three assists 2.9 threes and 45 percent from the field for robinson so we know he's a flamethrower and he's hit more threes in his career than two-point field goals by a large margin is Duncan Robinson. So he's the specialist th- shooting that three ball for the Heat. And if you need that in scoring, pretty much though, those are the two categories. He's going to give you once in a while, he'll give you some assists. And the last two games, he actually does have 10 assists in that time. March 13th versus the Nuggets, 11.6 rebounds, three assists, a steal with three fifty percent from the field. March 15th at Detroit, 16 points, two boards, five assists, three steals, a block, four threes, 42% from the field. The March 17th at Detroit, 30 points, four rebounds, five assists, seven threes, and 66% from the field. So he really popped off Detroit Pistons, even though we know the Pistons are one of the worst teams, if not the worst team in the NBA. So right now, with Robinson scoring the basketball well and hitting the three ball, and those are the two categories he'll give you consistently with some games, like I said, assist and rebounds. He's a good ad and he's available in 50% of fantasy leagues. The next card I looked at off the wire this week, he's been a guy definitely under the radar since the NBA trade deadlines. Vashi Misik of the Charlotte Hornets. So, well, Melo Ball, I don't know if he's going to come back at all this season, but he's been out pretty much the whole year, it seems like. One injury after another. And with this Hornet team out of it, they're just going to play the young guys and see what they got for the future anyway. We know Ball's locked in to a big contract on the year, 6.4 points a game, 1.3 rebounds, 3.7 assists, and 44% from the field for the last couple weeks. He's been playing great basketball, 15.9 points a game, 2.9 rebounds, 5.6 assists, a steal, 1.4 threes, and 50% from the field. So right now, Mimic, he's been a big ad over the last few weeks, like I mentioned, after he was in the Gordon Hayward deal dealt to the Charlotte Hornets and went ball out. He's playing major minutes right now, about 30 minutes per game is me sick march 13th at memphis 25 points eight assists two steals five threes 90 percent from the field march 15th versus the suns 21 points a board three assists a block 58 percent from the field the march 16th at philly 11 points two rebounds four assists a steal a block at three 41 percent from the field so he's scoring the basketball he's assisting the basketball pretty well and he's available right now in 64 percent of fantasy leagues if you need those categories I think help on is in a good way in this playoff run now. The next guard I looked at off the wall is Nikhil Alexander Walker, Minnesota Timberwolves. Alexander Walker, he didn't play much early in the season, but the last few weeks his playing time's gone up and the production has gone up on the year. 7.7 points a game, 2.1 rebounds, 2.6 assists, and 1.5 threes, 43% from the field. But the last couple weeks, 12.3 points a game, 2.9 rebounds, 2 assists, 2.1 threes, and 53%. From the field, so Alexander Walker available in tons of fantasy leagues right now at 88%. And this team, they're playing Monday and Tuesday to start the week, which obviously is a plus for fantasy owners to try to get off to a good start. So March 10th 
at the wake is 15.7 boards, 5 assists, 2 steals, 3 threes, 54%. From the field, March 12th at the Clippers, 28 points, 3 boards, and assists, a block, 5 threes, 90%. From the field, the March 16th at the Jazz, 8 points, 5 boards, 2 assists, 2 threes, 42% from the field. So, Alexander Walker, he was a good scorer when he was on the New Orleans Pelicans. And this season, like I said early in the year, he didn't get much of a chance to get good playing time. But now he has, and he's had some fantasy value over the last couple weeks. If you need scoring, rebounding, and three-point shooting, Alexander Walker definitely can bring that to fantasy owners. And like I said, he's out there in 88% of fantasy leagues. And the fifth and final guard I looked at off the wire this week here is Peyton Pritchard of the Boston Celtics. So Peyton Pritchard, he's had some flashes over the last few seasons on and off. But obviously playing time has been an issue for him as well on the year. Eight points a game, 3.2 boards, 2.7 assists, 1.7 threes, and 43% from the field. So this Celtic team... It's been a great season for them, and I think they're going to start playing the bench a little bit more to give the starters a little extra rest going into the playoff push in the next few weeks. And Peyton Pritchard now, he's starting to play anywhere from 25, 30 minutes to game over the last couple weeks here. March 12th at Utah, 10 points, two boards, two assists, two threes, 25% from the field. March 14th, a down game, three points, three boards, an assist to steal, a three, 33%. From the field of March 17th at the Wizards, 14 points, 5 boards, a career high, 13 assists, a steal, 2 threes, 40% from the field. So it was a blowout victory at the Wizards, one of the worst teams in the league. Playing time, 35 minutes in that one is Pritchard. But Pritchard, he's a good guy to, that comes off the bench. With this Celtic team up there in the rankings in the Eastern Conference, they're going to be a top 1 and 2 seed pretty easily. Like I said, they're going to play most of these bench guys, I believe, a little bit more than they have. And give the starters... Still playing time, but cut their minutes down until the playoffs are Pritchard available right now. Tons of fantasy leagues at 93%. And he's a guard I looked at this week. So that's a few guards I looked at. Well, the first week of the playoffs starting in most fantasy leagues for week 21 of the fantasy basketball season.